Black women are not bosses. I'm sick Excuse of the narrative me? that black women are strong, independent. I, never, I didn't and say well, strong, independent. Well, I said not, boss. Man, a man does not want a woman who says she's a boss. It's a cool man that wants a No, boss. no, no man. Such they respect you as your singer that's and they're pandering funny. because of your talent. But are they taking you home and saying, that's my wife? Somehow. There's a difference. Somehow. But that's a Between your seven. art and being a wife. Because yeah. the Bible, too, you talked about being a Christian. Yeah. But it says the older women need to teach the younger women. And younger women need to submissive. But you know how many young women are not submissive to what men say? But you say you're a Christian woman. Okay. You can't be a Christian woman and buck against what men are saying. That is anti-biblical, it's anti-God, it's anti-Christ, and it makes you the great Babylon. I'm going to be honest But with don't you. claim Christianity okay. if you're not willing to submit to what men are telling you. I can a lot of women are Christian feminists. But you came Christianity when it works in your favor, but you put down men and say, I'm, you're rebellious. Yeah. You are anti-Christ, and you are the Jezebel. She's speaking nothing but facts. I mean... I talk to Christian women all the time about this and they a lot of us don't understand that our submission and obedience to our husbands is unto the Lord. If you're rebelling against your husband, you're rebelling against God. Take it to God. Pray about it. Read your Bible. I would not suggest going to a church and asking them about it because feminism has infiltrated them too. I'm not I am wearing a cross. You're, I, you're wearing a cross. Yes. Do you consider yourself a Christian? I believe in God. Let me ask you a question. Do you wear your cross while you're engaging in producing porn or OnlyFans content? I always wear my cross. You always wear your cross. I okay, never take so it off. Do you think that God approves of you doing porn, basically? Yeah, it's not hurting anybody. I do it very safely. Do you think God wants you making porn? God said that he loves everyone. Okay, I have a question. If God wants you to be a porn star. What do you think Satan wants? To stop doing what I do, I guess? S what? Satan wants you to not do porn and God uh, wants you to do porn. If I have, do I have that right? Yeah. Shalom. All praise to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. This video is going to be entitled response. There is no benefit in being a good woman. There is no benefit in being a good woman. And these are the words of a, of a woman. All right. From this uh, post right here. But before I get into that, I want to just say this video in the beginning. I had a couple of videos in the beginning. This first one was uh, this one woman putting this other chick in her place, which I, I just had to find a way to use that clip i want to use that because uh she was absolutely on point i don't know who she is she was on point right and she was getting on it was, it was an older older so-called black woman getting on a uh <laughs> a damn muley a blue-haired freak right who did who couldn't get her words together but she was getting on her and she looked like she was kind of receiving it. she was embarrassed she told her straight up you know you're an anti you, you feminist have crept into the church and whatnot and it was another chick at the end too also a light-skinned black woman she said that don't try to go to church and learn about you know as far as women are concerned because feminism has crept into the church and that's absolutely true now i ain't gonna say a whole lot about that video and there was another one i put in here too but this uh asian chick she going on and on and the dude basically said you know asked her she said that the most i wanted her to do wanted her to do porn and the guy said well what does satan want you to do all right and it was just kind of funny not really going to really say a whole lot about that either i just sometimes these stupid things that you see on the internet or some things that catch your attention i put them in videos you know and maybe another brother will come along and do a lesson on it or whatever anyway you just you heard her reply now i want to say unequivocally without a doubt that wearing a cross doesn't mean shit okay because a cross is a graven image and it is the death instrument of our Lord. So why in the hell would any person who called themselves a believer in the Savior wear a cross? I mean, would you, if you had a relative that died in a car wreck, would you wear a crumpled up car around your damn neck and remember some of them? No, you wouldn't. What if they shot themselves in the head? Would you have a little pistol or a head with blood spraying out of it as a, as a necklace? No, you wouldn't. It's very fucking foolish to wear a cross on your damn neck, especially if you're an Israelite. An Israelite with a cross on, don't talk to me. Okay, don't talk to me. 
Anyway, enough about that. I really wanted to speak on this. this is the main thing I wanted to speak on, which is where the title comes from. And you can see from the other posts that the majority of these women, even if you didn't watch the post, you see the vibration on the planet now, right? And the way that these women live, the way that they behave, their attitudes, they're all a bunch of demons. Especially when you get one like this. This, 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 this little Wookiee right here, okay? Now, you might look good to the eye, but you got to get past that. You got to get past how a woman looks. Don't be a simp all your damn life. This thing right here is rotten to the core. Now, this is uh, a post that a brother had posted that she put up at some point. Uh, Sean Lavelle James. Let's read it. She says, when you're as extremely beautiful as I am, you can cheat on and leave as many men as you want to. <laughs> Take that in. You know, words are powerful and they carry a lot of weight. So you heard what she said. When you're as extremely beautiful as I am, you can cheat on and leave as many men as you want to. There is no benefit in being a good woman. That's where the title comes from. This is the response. There is no benefit in being a good woman. I drain men of their finances and leave for a new man with a bag. I said what the fuck I said. You see, so this music, this black culture, right? It has had a very negative effect on the men and the women. But we see it mainly with these women. And she said she'll, she'll drain the shit out of a man, right? Leave him with a bunch of money and then get with another dude. And you know that guy's going to have to have a bunch of money too. So she's, she's going to do this over and over and over. But what's going to wind up happening is... The most high going she gonna get with the right guy and she's gonna wind up getting getting messed up. Alright, she's gonna wind up getting getting put to death. So you can expect in the coming however long, years, days, months, that eventually you're gonna read a story about her. And she and you know, if it's not done by a man, then she just gonna something bad just gonna happen to her, man. You can't go walking around into the earth doing iniquity like this and then think it's alright. Alright? You ever heard the expression what comes around goes around? Well that comes from the scriptures. Let's go to it. What comes around goes around. Comes right out of the Bible. We can read it now. All right. Let's go to it. Blue letter. And I, and, I, and don't get me wrong. The concept, not the same, but the concept. Let me let me rephrase what I said. Because the devil is in the details. So you have to say what you mean and mean what you say. So no, the saying doesn't come from the Bible. But the concept of what, you know, what comes around goes around comes from the Bible. The concept. You can read it in Galatians 6 and 7. It says, Be not deceived. The Most High is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So what you do, it comes back. You do dirt, you get dirt, right? It says, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. All right? And I would really like, let's see here what it says, uh, yeah, let's go to the NLT and read it briefly. See, the things you do, it comes back. Galatians 6 and 7 from the NLT. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of the Most High. Now, I did a video the other day. It was called, uh, Every Morning Doth He Bring His Judgment, right? Every time you looked at the word ju judgment in the scriptures, when you looked at it, at the definition, one of the words was justice. So whenever you see individuals get judgment, what is the judgment? It's justice in the eyes of the Lord. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of the Most High. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. And that's right there plainly. You see? And there's another one, Colossians, if we can go to it, Colossians 3.25. Colossians 3.25. It says, but if you do what is wrong, you will be paid back for the wrong you have done for the Most High has no favorites. Now, I don't like that translation so much because the Most High does have favorites. But when he says there's no respect to persons, that doesn't mean there's not a favorite. That means that judgment rests upon the heads of even those he loves right there's one law one law for all for everybody and that is what you do comes back all right colossians 325 but what he 
But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons, right? And even though the Most High does have favorites, King David was a favorite of the Most High, but did judgment pass over him when he deserved judgment? The answer is no. Anyway, let's go back to this to this harlot. Let's read it again. When you're as extremely beautiful as I am, you can cheat on and leave as many men as you want to. There is no benefit in being a good woman. So in her eyes, nothing good can come to you from being a good woman. And that is completely satanic. Because if it's true, the things we do come back. If you were a good woman, wouldn't you not get repaid good for good? Yes, you would. So that's that's false doctrine, even mixed inside of her warped brain. But that's what these women are now. They think that the, the, the finer things in life are, are being beautiful, that you should get, you should be given things based upon your outward beauty. That's what this world teaches you. And this is just complete bullshit. First off, let's read Proverbs, I'm sorry, Ecclesiastes, right? And uh, we'll start at verse 25, 7, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 25. And listen to the wisdom that King Solomon put forth in the book of Ecclesiastes, okay? Because this is what you got to understand. You know, there's warnings throughout the scriptures. And women are warned about. I don't care if your Western emotional self don't like me saying that. It's the truth. Okay. On a whole, women are evil. They're wicked. On a whole. I didn't say every single woman. I said women on a whole. On a whole, men are evil and wicked. However, you do have chosen men. And you have righteous men on the earth. All right, let's read this. Ecclesiastes 7.25. I applied mine heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. And I find more bitter than death the woman. But what kind of woman? Whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands. Whoso pleases the Most High shall escape from her but the sinner shall be taken by her. But this have I found, saith the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account, which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not. One man among a thousand have I found. What was King Solomon talking about? A righteous man. But one man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have I not found. So if you count of a thousand men, one of them would be righteous out of a thousand, right? That's a thousand percent, okay? A one one percent out of a thousand. That's that's how much that is. Or you know what? It's actually point zero 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 one. I would imagine if you if you put it in terms that way, it's a very small percentage. Now, out of a thousand women, guess how many righteous women you're gonna find? None. And King Solomon would know because he had a thousand at one time, over a thousand women. I would say. I don't know if that's exactly. Because it said he had 700 princes and 300 concubines, right? But he may have had other women as well. But at that one time, he had a thousand women, so he would know. Was yet my soul seeketh, but I find not. One man among a thousand have I, have I found, but a woman among all those have I not found. Now, maybe you got to count 2,000 women or 3,000 before you find one that's right. I don't know. The scriptures don't say that. Verse 29, lo, this have I, this only have I found, that the most I have made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. And there you go. All right. So the operative thing up here at the top means, and I find more bitter, verse 26, and I find more bitter than death, the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands. And this is her right here. Her heart is snares in her mind. She's thinking of ways to trap it, even from the beginning. She ain't saying I'm gonna get into this relationship with a man. And then if he if it don't go right, then I can see what I can get. No, she's entering in from the beginning. Her plan from the beginning is to she don't give a damn about you. Right? And we've seen this, and she's just a replica. She's not one of she's not an original. She is a replica. This is what's being pushed out to you as as uh as acceptable among women. Among black, uh, so-called black people, and this woman will sleep with any man from any culture. She'll she'll get with them Arab men from over there in Dubai, or whatever. She'll go fly over there, let them poop on her, let them do whatever they want to do. These these types of women are a dime a dozen or or what? Or you can get twelve of them for ten cent. 
but it, it's, it's very commonplace these days for women to be like this and it's, it's disgusting all right she says there is no benefit in being a good woman because to her the only benefit is having fun living living wild free fast getting everything she could get and leaving with money right i drain men of their finances and leave for a new man with a bag well you must ain't never ran into gilbert arenas did because gilbert arenas said he take a bitch out to dinner the first dinner she gonna pay for it you know <laughs> gilbert arenas got millions of dollars but he said he he said and he had a good quote the other day i was listening to gilbert arenas the former uh point guard in the nba he said that men that have money women are basically useless to them and he's right they are because and really women are women look not to demean women to put them down but women have their place but in the grand scheme of things they're the least of, of our problems or even worries man and you get tired of it women being shoved down their throats their booties and all this stuff you're insignificant at the end of the day but every time we do a video and we put this is a thumbnail then a bunch of people are gonna flock and watch it with your damn mouth open even among the israelites a lot of you are just simps you have not understood the dynamic between men and women in a righteous sense and in the grand scheme of things in the kingdom of heaven you have not understood that the woman is a small thing okay you think that the woman in the kingdom you think you're gonna have a king and a queen they're gonna be equal you ain't gonna be equal women are accessories like a belt or shoes or a purse even in even in the kingdom of heaven i mean don't get me wrong they got their place and they got their beautiful you know there's beauty as far as they're concerned bringing forth children and teaching the young but they're not meant to be you know the most high didn't put women here to be the main dish okay he didn't put them here for that and the sooner you understand that as men the better off you're gonna be now i want to go back so lock you for my rent all right but you know you get you get pissed off i'm just i'm really tired i'm tired of this society and i'm tired of the, the uh importance they place upon women Especially when you know from a righteous sense that they ain't even that damn important. This is Ecclesiastes 725 from the NLT. It says, I search everywhere determined to find wisdom and to understand the reason of, for things. I was determined to prove to myself that wickedness is stupid and that foolishness is madness. I discovered that a seductive woman is a trap more bitter than death. Now, the scripture didn't say that. It said, I find more bitter than death the woman, right? Whose heart, you know, a certain kind of woman, which this is, let's read the rest of it and see what it says. I, I discovered that a seductive woman is a trap more bitter than death. Her passion is a snare and her soft hands are chains. Those who are pleasing the most high will escape her, but sinners will be caught in her snare. And I'll stop it right there. You know what? I want to see. I want to read a little more. But that's a fire translation. I do like it. This is my conclusion, says the teacher. I discovered this after looking at the matter from every possible angle. Though I have searched repeatedly, I have not found what I was looking for. Only one out of a thousand men is virtuous, but not one woman. There you go. I like that. That's 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 heavy. All right. But he was, you know, this this translation did read correct. It says, you know, it talked about the woman. Let's read it again. I discovered that a seductive woman is a trap more bitter than death. Her passion is a snare and her soft hands are chains. Those who are pleasing to the Most High will escape her, but sinners will be caught in her snare. And it is a trap. And, men, and women lay traps. You hear horror stories. I've heard horror stories of women sleeping with NBA players. A man used a condom. He throw the condom in the trash. After the fact, the woman go in there and take the condom out. <laughs> take the condom out and then pour the contents. You know what's in it. And pour them in themselves and the men have no idea that they've done this and then the woman becomes pregnant with that man child and that way she can get him on the hook for child support for 18 years because he's in the nba and i'm sure there's other worse things than that i've heard of women putting pinholes in men's condoms all kind of stuff now you got the the, the what are they called uh the cougars the older women larsa pippen and this chick drea former you know been passed around from certain nba players and fucking different athletes then a young guy comes along. He don't know what the hell is going on. Jalen Brooks. And he meet up with, with what's the bitch, Drea. Then he get her pregnant. His 22-year-old ass don't even know. He just now got money. And that damn cougar, 39 years old, already got him. She already pregnant, see? After she'd been passed around. So, you know, you just have to watch out, man. But this is a thing in Babylon. But we're looking forward to this kind of shit being cut off and no longer being among us. We're going on to a new age. 
right to the age of righteousness where women will no longer be able to use their bodies to manipulate right to use they 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 wop <laughs> i'm sorry that's even a phrase able to use they you know their uh their in insides to maneuver and to, and to jump from man to man and at the end of the day you got a lot of men that simps if if righteousness was instituted on the earth women would not be able to do this because one to, once a woman is with one man she got to stay with that man or be unmarried so if the what if this woman had a man that was righteous and she leaves him then the next man that was going to be with her he might be attracted to her but then he's going to inquire do you have a husband were you with a man and when she said yeah through through a threat of death by adultery or from adultery every man would avoid her like the plague so you're in a fucked up society and this is why she says there is no benefit in being a good woman so it's not that she don't know right from wrong because she does know but she's a schemer she's a scammer a schemer a plotter right and she don't love nobody it's gonna be some some new come on brother come on now fuck you man she's a whore okay now let's get another scripture i want to read this one from proverbs because like i brought up it's gonna come a day she's gonna run into the right dude who's not gonna be able to handle her because these women now now not only do they do iniquity they'll do that shit in your face be with your best friend or whoever and then post about it on social media right and flaunt it in your face and say proudly, I said what the fuck I said. So you know what? The man gonna say, okay, that's how you wanna do it. See, a lot of men are unstable. And they've been raised by a single parent uh, uh, demons just like yourself. So, you know, hey, what's gonna happen if a guy, if she runs into a man that was raised by a woman with the same attitude as her attitude, that woman gonna tell her, you can't let that ride. And men have a natural jealousy. And, and, and look, serious men with money they ain't gonna take that too lightly so let's read this this is proverbs 6 and 28 i'm sorry verse 27 it says can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned can one go go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned and the answer is no so he that goeth in to his neighbor's wife Whosoever touches her shall not be innocent. Now, you, I know you're going to say, well, she ain't even married. Yes, yeah, well, this is the thing. Marriage in the Bible is constituted that once a man go in into a woman, that's his wife. That's his woman, right? Now, even though they may not be married legally, officially by paperwork here, the feeling still translated. And a lot of times when a man has spent time with you, he invested his money, his resources into you, and then you... The whole time never was serious about him sometimes that little door in his brain might trip and fly open right and the damn jealous man comes out and he and he views you as his woman when i start giving you money <laughs> hey it's, it's it's different now so you just never know but let's keep reading so he that goeth in to his neighbor's wife whosoever touches her shall not be innocent men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry but if he be found he shall restore sevenfold he shall give all the substance of his house but whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding he that doeth it destroyeth his own soul I, ho I hope you can hear the severity in this in these words a wound and dishonor shall he get and his reproach shall not be wiped away listen to this for jealousy is the rage of a man Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. And it ain't going to matter if you say, well, we ain't got no ring. We ain't, it don't make no difference. When that man start getting with that woman, and as she say, when you're as extremely beautiful as I am, and he start being with that woman and laying down with her and, and, and sharing, you know, swapping saliva and every other body fluid with her, and you spending his money on her, giving her resources, it ain't going to matter to him that he got all the money in the world if she start playing him dirty. Now, a smart man... In this society now would be like yeah whatever i spent what i spent on her she just you know i got plenty of others that would be the smart way to go but every man ain't the same some men gonna take exception to the fact of being played that's a big thing among so-called blacks that whole thing where you dissing me you disrespecting me that shit get a lot of people killed not knowing how to take shit you know sure i could i could have millions of dollars and you could play me for a few few hundred thousand or whatever and i might not even give a shit Especially if I got more women, but 
Every man ain't the same, as I said. Every man, men that don't have a righteous mindset, it ain't gonna matter to them how much money they got left. They just can't take, they just can't take being beat. So what they gonna do, they gonna rise up and they gonna take revenge. And the Lord gonna put a spirit on them anyway. I expect to read about her in the coming future. The coming near future. Again, Proverbs 6.34, for jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. You're going to be, come on, I'm sorry. I always loved you. Can we get back together? See, look, look, look. <laughs> I'm, taking his, I'm taking his chain off. I don't want to be, nope. He ain't going to care. A man that's hurt, he's not going to care. Because he still knows he got money. He can get other women. But the thing is, he has to avenge that, that disrespect. That's the main thing that's on his mind. Because long after the money is gone or after you gone, the disrespect will still be there. And that's what women don't really understand about men. We don't give a fuck about their material possession as much. It ain't about that. It's about the disrespect. There's something about being a man, even without money, when a woman talks to you a certain way, even if you don't know the woman. It's something within men that when a woman talks slick to you, it's something within, inside of you. That you just cast off all caution and you really at the end of the day you want to take her damn head off women don't get that you can talk all that shit about oh, a real man wouldn't hit a woman the fuck that you can say all that you want to say the way the most high made men is we're, we're geared to not be disrespected especially from a subordinate which one of you out there would be a man you know be a boss on a job and a subordinate gonna talk talk slick to you you wouldn't allow it and neither will you allow it in real life all right just saying for jealousy is the rage of a man, therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom. He can't be paid off. Neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. Because like I said, even after you can give a man a gift, he may take some in exchange, you know. But at the end of the day, that disrespect is going to still be there. He's going to think about it for years. Years it takes. And I would know, after a woman do you dirty, You'll be thinking about it for years, especially if she's bragging about it. See, most men might let some shit slide. Even if you felt hurt, you still might let it slide. But if she's bragging about it, oh, no, that's not going to work. <laughs> you see? And even after she put this post up, I bet you there were men in the comment telling her, come on, Charlotte, let's hook up or whatever, right? There's going to be men that still want her regardless of what she said because of how she looks and because you goddamn weak. She should be the enemy, but it's not going to be that way. You're going to have this, this simple society. They're going to allow this stuff to go on, man. But it's all good, though. This, this day is, her days are, are, are numbered. Let's read real quick here. That mindset. That mindset of wanting money and clothes and cars and all those things. That's of the world, okay? That mindset of, you know, and don't get me wrong, we had kings of Israel who had wealth. But what did King Solomon, when the Most High asked King Solomon what he wanted, did he tell him, I want uh, wealth? No. But the Most High said, since he didn't ask for that, he was going to give him more than he, you know, I don't remember exactly how he said it. But he said, since he didn't ask for that, he was going to give him, that's what he was going to give him. You see? I'll read this quick here and then we'll shut it down. This is First John 2.15. A warning about material possessions because black culture has made you covetous out there. Watch out. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Right. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of the Most High abideth forever. That's what you want. Strive to do the will of the heavenly father okay james 4 and 4 ye adulterers and adulteresses know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with the most high therefore whosoever therefore be a friend of the world is the enemy of the most high and you're a friend of the world when you start listening and letting these type things go in your mind because who told her that these women of the world your megan the stallion cardi b sexy red uh uh who else uh Megan the Stallion, if I didn't say her, Cardi B, Sexy Red, uh, there's one I'm missing here. I can't remember whoever. Nicki Minaj, I did say, and all, you know all those all those different rappers now. Sukiana, right? That sexual shit. She's saying she drained me. How you think she's doing it? 
She using sex to do it, of course. She ain't just doing it. Ain't nobody giving no woman no bunch of money just, just because she pretty, okay? Nah, something else got to go with it. So, anyway, watch out out there, brothers. And even you sisters, watch out. Because a lot of women like these are, are, are they even starting to come into the truth. We see them. We see you out there. Anyway, that's it. This has been response. There is no benefit in being a good woman. We'll see you soon, Lord willing. All praise you. How about Shimmy? How about Shalom.